A commonly asked question, is reincarnation a punishment? I don't know about you, but I'd never heard of reincarnation. I never heard of re-embodiment until I met my husband and our, our good friend, Mr. O. So I'm going to turn to my husband and ask him to first explain the difference between what reincarnation is, re-embodiment, and then we're going to get to the question about if this is a punishment for us. Honey? Well, first, welcome back after a two years... <laughs> Not two years after a, a few weeks sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your understanding? I always want to see if I did a good job explaining this to you. So, what's your understanding of reincarnation? Or what is the difference between reincarnation and reembodiment, as far as your understanding? Yes, oh great, wise sage, the teaching that you gave me. <laughs> 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 Reincarnation is the belief that you can come back as a plant, an animal, some other object other than human. Whereas re-embodiment means you always come back as a human and only a human. Very good. Yay. And, and that's really the difference. Now, are we saying that one is accurate and one is not? No. We're not saying that at all. Mm -mm. We're just talking from the standpoint of the teachings of the Ascended Masters, you know, what they teach us. And what we've learned and what they continue to teach us is that reincarnation, the belief of reincarnation, just like you said, is that some people will come back as, you know, you're a human being, and based on what you experience in that lifetime, um, or what you've done in that lifetime, you could come back as in I won't say reborn because you're not a human being but I guess you're reborn because an animal is reborn right right you can be reborn as a dog or a fish or you could even come back as a tree or a fly or a fly a spider exactly. anything now, other than human now that I think about that just us saying that mm -hmm. that's probably where this question comes from because if you're a human being I know you're coming back as a tree or mm -hmm. an animal, it could be seen as a punishment, right? Right. Maybe you were cruel to animals. And so now, the belief is that if you reincarnate as an animal, now you know what it's like to be an animal and to be treated the way maybe you treated animals when you were a human being. Got it. So, maybe that's where it came. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking. How does that sound to you? That actually sounds very feasible. You know, yeah. um, because if it were, but, uh, and to me that, that's not accurate based on our experience, but um, yes, that, that sounds like it because I've heard stories um, from Buddhist teachings, you know, killing an ant or the fly in your house, you know, you're creating that karma and you can come back as that creature, so you can balance that karma with that creature. And so that's part of Buddhist teachings. Right. And maybe other teachings. That's why they don't believe in killing living things. Correct. Well, I guess, I don't know if it's living things because, well, yes, it's living things. Even a plant, they wouldn't kill a plant. They'll right. eat the leaf, but mm -hmm. not kill the actual plant. So, yes. So, and of course, part of the Buddhist teachings is reincarnation. And there are other religions or faiths that believe that as well. Mm -hmm. Going back to what we've been taught by the Ascended Masters, there is re-embodiment, which means that you have a soul and you might pass on, but your soul lives forever. It exists forever. So what happens then is that once we pass on, the soul, that's why it's called passing on, because you just move from one dimension to another dimension. You're in this dimension right now, where we are. And where mm -hmm. I can see you, in can the see physical you. dimension. Exactly. But then when we go into a different dimension, then it's all spiritual, and that's where the soul, you can see somebody's soul. Just like when you see pictures of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. his, head, his head always has this bright light around it. They, they call, call it a halo. Right, a halo. Uh -huh. There's always a glow around him, or Mother Mary, or exactly. some of the other saints in the Catholic Church. Do you wonder why that is? Not anymore. Well, okay. Well, 
Well, when I was younger, I mean, obviously in the Catholic Church, we're taught that if you see someone depicted with the halo around their head, it means that they've died and gone to heaven. Oh, is that what he meant? That's what I was taught. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe different for other Catholics, depends on who teaches you. Um, but now I understand it as that they are beings of light, and that is a representation of their light coming through. Exactly. And that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. We're all made of light, and the more karma that we balance, the more light you get to see, because all the darkness is going away. Mm -hmm. So whenever you see that halo, so-called halo, it's not just from the head, it's from the entire it's body. It's the entire body. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know that person has a lot of light within that individual. Oh, okay. So if they have that much light, they might not need to wear a body. Okay, so why do we come back? As in, why do we get reborn? Why are we given a second shot at life? Because we're here to learn lessons from the previous life that we were in. Okay, um, we could have done something in that lifetime that wasn't so very nice, and so we come into this life and we're given a chance to correct it. Now, the way we're taught as Catholics is that you have one life to live, right? Right, you only live one life. Mm -hmm. um, so then you go down to you purgatory to balance out whatever you need to for your sins. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you don't get it right this time, you could be in trouble, right? Right. Well, what the SMI just teach us is that I know that's not the way it works, you do get a second chance. How could God be a, a fair God? Fair and love, fair. As in fair, F-A-I-R, -A, okay? a fair God. A loving God, mm -hmm. if he gives you one shot, right? Mm -hmm. And like in a movie, and then based on our faith, the Catholic faith, I don't know about the other ones, but the Catholic faith, we're even told you could mess up your whole life. And just before you die, if you confess, and you repent, and you repent. deeply repent for everything you've done wrong. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Go figure that one. Yes, right? I've often wondered about that. So, we're Catholics, but then from what the SMS have taught us, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to come back and take care of that yourself. And nobody can come and, you know, Father so-and-so can't just come and say, Oh, hey, okay, you're, you're forgiven. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. But we're still Catholics, so we believe in our faith very strongly. So, mm -hmm. anyway... That's the point, that you're given a second chance, and maybe a third chance, or a fourth chance. Mm -hmm. So, to go back to the individual's question, or to go back to that question, is it a punishment? No. It's a chance for us to correct things that need to be corrected. And to learn and grow. That's correct. You know, that's really what re-embodiment is. Now, reincarnation, based on what we just figured out, we weren't told that, right. or what we think we figured out, Maybe in a case like that, you could say that someone is being punished because based on the Bible, you being a human being is one of the highest level of life, right? Mm -hmm. Because God gave dominion to man over everything on earth, right. which means man is the big shot on earth. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have dominion over all the animals and plants and all of a sudden now you come back as an animal, that tells you that you're lesser than what you were before. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Makes sense to me what so, you're saying. So mm -hmm. that would be sort of a punishment, wouldn't it? Because you're not the same so. level. Right. Means in, you've regressed. Exactly. In re-embodiment, you come back as a human being. All you the always time. come back as a human being. All the time. Now you might look different. You might sound different. You might even be a different gender. You know, um, and depending on what it is that you need to learn or you're working on, you could come back being extremely wealthy, you could come back being extremely poor. Mm -hmm. You could and come back disfigured. Exactly. Or you could come back the most beautiful or handsome person in the universe. Mm -hmm. It all depends on what it is that you're working on. Now someone might say, well, if you come back being ugly, then that's a punishment. Now it's only a punishment if you don't understand the purpose of you coming that way. You might start out that way and then actually change. And by the time you get to the prime of your life, you're one of the most beautiful people in the world. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that to you, you look ugly, but then the things that you have to offer to the world, they overlook the way you look. Mm -hmm. 
So after all, looks don't mean much, do they? Right. Um, do you have any example of that? If you were to think, do you know anybody or any instance where someone might be disfigured or they have handicaps, whatever that might be, but they're extremely popular at this time and very successful? Well, Stephen Hawking. Oh, that's a really good one. Now, for someone that doesn't know Stephen Hawking is... Wasn't he, it was that called a quadriplegic because he was paralyzed from the neck down? Yeah, he could move with his mouth. And then right. he couldn't move his mouth, really. Okay. Because everything was from the throat. Okay. So he couldn't even do that. Look up Stephen Hawking if you want to know who we're talking about. I think there's even a movie about him now. I think so. Right. Uh, he's brilliant, considered, brilliant exactly. man. He's considered one of the most brilliant minds of all times. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you're talking about comparing him to Einstein. Mm -hmm. And this man has been totally, what is it? His body doesn't function besides his brain. Well, he's passed on, but yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. He's mm -hmm. When did he pass? Like a couple, three years ago, maybe? Well, I don't recall. That's I just know he's passed on. Right. Well, he's one of the most brilliant minds, astro astrophysicists. He had, like, no use of his body. He was deformed and messed up. He lived in a wheelchair for the most of his life. Mm -hmm. They had to design a computer system to go in his wheelchair. That's how he communicated with people, mm -hmm. through a computer. So he could have looked at himself and said, oh, I'm being punished. Look at me, I can't even move. My legs don't move, my arms don't move, nothing moves. Yet still, he's known as one of the most brilliant minds that ever lived. Mm -hmm. So is that punishment? I don't think so. He learned his lesson. So you can tell that he came back, he balanced whatever karma he had to balance, and to fulfill his purpose, which is he gave all he could to mankind. That's what we're all supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Give our best for mankind so people can benefit from it. It's clear that he did that. Right. Even though he had what we would consider all these handicaps. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's a great example. Another example, um, to go along the lines of understanding the reincarnation thing, um, and, and how I believe that, that it's only re-embodiment for us as humans, um, my husband was doing some work and he was shared with him that part of the challenges that he has because of having allergies with animals in this lifetime and karma with animals is because he was an animal poacher in a previous life. And because of being an animal poacher, when he came back in this life to balance out what he had done in that one, he's allergic to animals, not able to really deal with animals. And even eating animals is not good for him. But that's, so he didn't come back as an animal to find out what it's like to be hunted and killed or whatever it may be believed from the reincarnation standpoint, but from a re-embodiment standpoint, he's here and balancing that. Yeah, that's life. right. I mean, in that lifetime, I was a Caucasian guy going all the way to Africa to hunt animals. Man! I know. Isn't that something? Anyway. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's really something. Um, that's right. And now all of a sudden, I just... I just smell dead animal, or I just look at animal and I want to throw up. Yeah, he just smells chicken, he's like, oh, uh -huh. get me out of the kitchen, turn on some fans, uh, exactly. sage the house. <laughs> so that, that's a good point, that's another good mm -hmm. point there, that if it, if it were a reincarnation, or maybe I was blessed not to go to reincarnation, <laughs> maybe they said, we won't reincarnate you, we'll have you do re you know, Just I don't know if reincarnation exists, but... I'm not going to say well, again that one exists, one doesn't. Right, oh, I right. I'm just saying based on, on that, that's right. why I believe it's only re-embodiment for us as humans. Well, we don't know that. Just say... I'm just... It's yeah. my belief. Well, leave your belief out of it. Just, just give the example. <laughs> okay. Right? So, you anyway, decide for yourself. Right. There we go. Uh, but that is a good one. And mm -hmm. it was the same thing with... Uh, well, there are other examples. I don't remember them offhand. But anyway, okay. but there are folks that... For example, we have guys like this one motivational speaker. I don't even know his name. He's a motivational speaker. He has no legs. They have to just set him like, on a table. Oh, I don't remember his and, name either. This, right, no arms either. Right, so he no was arms, born no with legs. no arms, no legs, but he's a swimmer. He lifts weights. He does all these uh, amazing does? things. I don't, I don't oh, know if it's the same video. person. Oh, I, really? I don't know if it's the same guy, but this guy's a motivational speaker. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I know he lifts. How does he lift weights? Oh, he uses his. You'd have to see the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> Instead of me trying to explain it, but I don't remember his name. And then there's... So again, it goes back to if it were punishment, mm -hmm. I guess the person that sees it as a punishment is because they don't understand their purpose. 
And it's also and they're looking at it as okay, I'm being punished. Right. Instead of looking at it from the standpoint of okay, there has to be a good reason why I'm this way. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure that I fulfill that purpose, whatever that purpose is. I was going to say it's more along the lines of perspective in the videos mm -hmm. that we did yes. on perspective because it really is how you see the situation. So maybe stepping and looking at it from a different perspective will help you to see the situation differently and realize you know this is for me to grow this is for me to become a better person to do more in life and to show that I can go beyond what limitations have been set for me physically in this or what life. seems like or what seems like limitations right. have been set in this life there are more there are more I said there are more obstacles which can be removed obstacles can be removed right right and, and I love what you said about the perspective and that goes with anything that if someone is go is dealing with something right now, a situation, and they feel that why am I going through this? Mm -hmm. It's a good. It's always a good. I always said the best question to ask is why, right? Yes. I always said that. Just ask why, because when you ask why, all of a sudden things start to go into motion to get your question answered. It really does. But don't ask why me. Just ask why. Am I going through this? Where is this headed? Mm -hmm. What lesson am I going to learn? Uh, w what am I supposed to learn from this? And once you do that, the answers start to come. And look at it as, I will get past this, whatever it is. You know, whatever the reason is, I know it will come. In the meantime, I will get rid of this obstacle. And if you do that, then it's not about whether reincarnation is a punishment or re is a punishment. It's more about, okay, what lesson am I supposed to learn from any situation that I happen to be in? And then you go to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does yeah. that answer that question? I believe that answers the question and more so. Okay. Please feel free to share this video, like, subscribe, find us at 190vision.com, 190vision on Instagram and YouTube. And on Facebook, you can join our group Clearing, Healing, and Guidance to share your stories in a safe, secure place.